Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds, and it's Tuesday, July 19th. Today I plan to talk about the condition of the reactors at Fukushima, and more importantly, the radi radiation that's been detected throughout Japan, not just on the site. And finally, I want to talk about a condition that the Japanese are beginning to call black rain. Well, the first thing is the condition of the site itself. All three Fukushima reactors that were running, one, two, and three, and the fuel pool on Unit 4 continue to release radiation. Now, you don't see it in the day because the days are warm now, but you do see it at night. And um, I, I've gotten many, many emails about this where people think that the site is blowing up. In fact, it's steam coming out of these reactors and, and hitting cold air from the Pacific. So they continue to release radiation. But, but most of the radiation from Fukushima was released in March and in April. At this point, there's a lot less radiation every day than there was in March and April. About 90 to 95 percent of the radiation from Fukushima was released in the first six weeks of the, um, of the accident. While it continues to release radiation, there's nowhere near as much on a daily basis. On the other hand, Fukushima may be continuing to release radiation for a long time. Well, the Japanese are building large tents to build, put over each of these reactors. The first tent is in fabrication now, and it will cover reactor one, and then they'll move to reactor two and reactor three, and, and finally uh, reactor four. Um, those tents are designed to prevent the steam from getting out and to collect it as water and treat it. So beginning in September, most of the airborne radiation will be eliminated from Fukushima, at least from Unit 1. And more and more, though, will wind up with the contaminated groundwater and the contaminated liquids that are on site. And there's nothing in the foreseeable future to eliminate those. As a matter of fact, the Japanese announced that it's going to be 10 years before they begin to begin to remove those cores. Um, from, the, from the bottom of the containment. There's no technology right now uh, to remove them. Remember, they've melted through the nuclear reactor and they're lying on the floor of the nuclear containment. And now at Three Mile Island, they had melted onto the bottom of the reactor, but not through the reactor. So this is brand new. And you know, it's sort of like trying to peel an egg off the bottom of a frying pan. Um, if it's cooked too long, it's a very, very complicated and, and difficult process. And that's what we're facing at uh, Fukushima in the long-term cleanup. So in the meantime, there'll be an awful lot of liquid radioactive waste that will have to be processed for 10 or perhaps 20 years. Well, in my mind, the more concerning thing is the information that's been coming in from off-site lately. Um, some friends of mine are, um, are biologists that had worked at Chernobyl and went to Japan to do some, some uh, scientific work over there. They went anticipating things were going to be bad. I got a call this week from them and they said, you know, things are really, really bad. So these are hardened scientists who are used to dealing with radiation and they believe that conditions of Fukushima are much worse than they had thought. Now there's some corroborating evidence that's come in on that. Um, the first is that mushrooms, about uh, 30 miles from the reactor, between 30 and 40 miles from the reactor, are found to be contaminated well in excess of um, what the Japanese are allowing. Now, the, ja the interesting part of that is that the mushrooms were grown indoors. So how can a mushroom grown indoors exceed the radiation standards that the Japanese have set? Uh, it's a major concern. And again, it's 35 miles from the accident. The second piece of corroborating evidence is that cattle have been contaminated um, throughout the Fukushima prefecture and beyond. In the last week, at first it started that eight cows were contaminated, and then it became 40 cows, and now it's over 130 cows that are contaminated. And I'm sure that number will go up as, as time goes on. Now, there's a couple interesting things here. First is that the, the cows were 30 to 40 miles from the reactor. And their cesium levels are, are well in excess of, of anything anyone has ever approved 
for human consumption. Now, when the cows got to market, the Japanese didn't sample the, the, the meat. They rubbed the hide of the cow to see if there was any contamination. And based on rubbing the hide of the cow, they released it to market. It was only after that that it was discovered that the meat was contaminated. That's not an acceptable way of measuring beef. But the more important issue here is that how did the cows pick up that contamination when everyone thought the cows were being fed silage? In other words, straw that had been, um, uh, been saved from before the accident. Well, it turns out that the, the Japanese use rice, um, the stalks of rice to feed their cows, and farmers out at 45 miles and beyond were cutting their rice stalks down and shipping it into the farms that were inside uh, the Fukushima prefecture. And the, the straw was contaminated to 500,000 disintegrations every second in a kilogram of straw. Now this is cesium, it's got a 30 year half-life. But 30 years from now, it's still going to be disintegrating at 250,000 disintegrations per second. And 30 years after that, at 125,000 disintegrations per second. That's what this term half-life means. Now this occurred out at 45 miles. You'll recall the Nuclear Regulatory Commission suggested evacuation out beyond 50 miles. And this appears to, um, to indicate that the NRC was right. The Japanese should have evacuated their population out beyond 50 miles and instead stopped at around 12 to, to 18 miles. Now, this contamination then has spread beyond the Fukushima prefecture, yet the prefecture itself seems to be the only place that the Japanese are worried about this radioactive exposure. The last thing I'd like to talk about today is what happens outside the 50 miles that we've just been talking about. It's already pretty clear based on the radiation in the straw that we discovered that the radiation even out as far as 50 miles is as high in some areas as Chernobyl was. Well, what about further? Let's take a look at Tokyo and I'm concerned there too. First, the sewage treatment plants in Tokyo have contaminated their sewage sludge. Now, normally that material is used in, in building construction material, but it's so radioactive it has to be stored outside under tarps until someone can figure out a way to get rid of it. The second thing is, a Japanese gentleman sent me a lab report. This person took it into their, their own hands to pay for a lab to analyze data on the street near a playground in Tokyo. Here's the lab report. It shows that there's 53,000 disintegrations per second in a kilogram, about 2.2 pounds of material on the side of a street near a playground in Tokyo. Now, this person was so concerned that they went to the, the mayor of that town and the mayor said, I'm not worried about it. Here's a citizen with his own money, paid for a lab report, and could get nowhere with, uh, with his local government. Well, there's another piece of data, and that comes out of the National Cancer Center Hospital near Tokyo as well. It's been on their website since a couple days after the accident. The report shows that on March 24th, that's nine days after the accident, the radioactive background outside the hospital was 30 times higher than the radioactive background inside the hospital. There was deposition of hot particles on the soil and it was significant enough to increase the amount of radiation that the detectors were picking up by a factor of 30. Now a National Cancer Hospital clearly knows how to measure radiation. So these are experienced scientists. Last report I want to share with you is every day I get an email from a, a prominent Japanese physicist named Dr. Glenn Saji. And he was their secretariat of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in Japan. And he wrote two days ago this. And it has to do with the straw that's been discovered near Fukushima. 
I believe it is due to storing straw in a field at the time the plume passed by during the first week of the accident. In particular, due to the black rain. Now, black rain is not a term I'm sure he uses lightly, but it clearly was experienced in Japan after the accident. What he's referring to there is clouds of radioactive particles, hot particles, depositing everywhere in northern Japan. Well, the Japanese are resourceful people, and as, as evidenced by their, by their World Cup win on Sunday. But they need to know the magnitude of the problem they're facing in order to handle it correctly. Rather than limit the information, it's important that they limit the radiation. Well, thank you very much, and I'll get back to you.